After the domain of the boundary value problem is created, it needs to be discretized so that it can be solved approximately. Start the measure by double clicking on Mesh in the Workbench window. Once it opens, we should see our geometry in the window. To start, highlight Mesh in the tree, and in the top bar, click Generate to create an initial mesh. We can see that this initial mesh is very coarse, particularly in the regions far from the airfoil. We can start to refine it by selecting mesh in the tree, and in the details pane, change element size to 0.5 meters. In the top bar, click Update to create the new mesh. This refinement makes the elements sufficiently small in the far field, but we need it to be much less coarse near the airfoil to get good results. With mesh selected in the tree, click Sizing in the top bar. Select the flow surface, and then in the details pane, click Geometry, and click Apply. Instead of choosing a specific element size, we want to select a specific region over which to refine the mesh. To do this, change Type to Sphere of Influence. We can see that we now have to specify a location for the center of the sphere. To do this, we want to create a new coordinate system with its origin at the desired location. Right click coordinate systems in the tree, select insert, new coordinate system. Right click, click rename, and name it airfoil center. In the details pane, we can specify the location of the origin of this coordinate system. Change Define By to Global Coordinates. Since our geometry places the leading edge of the airfoil at the origin of the default coordinate system, and the airfoil has a chord length of 1 meter, we can choose the center of the airfoil to be 0.5 meters to the right on the x-axis. Do this by setting Origin X to 0.5, and leaving origin y at 0. With this created, select face sizing under mesh in the tree and change sphere center to be airfoil center. Specify the sphere radius to be 3 meters and the element size to be 0 0.05 meters. With this complete, select Update in the top bar. Once the meshing process completes, select Mesh in the tree to view the mesh. We can see that this has refined the mesh significantly near the airfoil. We want to further refine the mesh along the outer edge. Select Sizing in the top bar again, choose the Edge Selection filter, and select the Airfoil Curve. In the Details pane, click Geometry, and select Apply. Change the Type to Number of Divisions, and enter 250. Change Capture Curvature to No, and set Behavior to Hard. The mesh can then be updated. Once this completes, Click Mesh to view the updated discretization. 
We can see that this has created 250 uniform cells along the edge of the airfoil, which will help to improve the results. Finally, we want to refine the mesh normal to the airfoil. To do this, select Inflation in the top bar. Choose the Face Selection Filter and select the Flow Domain. In the Details pane, select Apply next to Geometry. Select the Edge Selection Filter again and click on the airfoil curve. Back in the details pane, select boundary and click apply. Change inflation option to total thickness. Enter 10 for number of layers. Ensure the growth rate is 1.2 and choose a maximum thickness to be 0 0.01 meters. Click Update to add this to the mesh. Select Mesh in the tree to view the changes. If we zoom in near the airfoil, we can see that this made the elements thinner near the surface and made them get progressively thicker as you move away. If our simulation wasn't inviscid, this would help to capture the boundary layer development along the edge of our airfoil. Our inviscid simulation won't have natural boundary layer development, but this technique is still useful in capturing the flow changes near the airfoil, as well as generalizing the process for other simulations. With this completed, we can close the measure. Back in Workbench, make sure to save the project.